Now, the first way you can edit your video faster by far is to gather your stuff. And by stuff, I mean clips, footage, audio, images, sound effects, all of the above. Anything you have planned on using for the video and then import it onto your editor. And then properly organize it nice and neatly. That way you don't waste your time finding your assets and losing your pace and momentum later on. I know that our favorite part of the editing process is watching the final video and uploading it to YouTube. So by following these simple tips, you can expedite the process and you'll be able to do just that. All right, so the second tip is to learn how to use timeline markers. Almost every editing software has these and these are a great tool to use when you wanna mark an important part of the video or leave yourself a note to go back and edit a particular scene. I use timeline markers to remind me to go back to different parts to finish editing them or just to add a quick effect. Honestly, there's no wrong way to use timeline markers. You can use them however you want as long as it helps you in some way. But yeah, these little markers can help you find particular parts of a video way faster than just scrubbing through the whole video and finding it yourself. This next tip is to edit in segments. Sometimes it's a good idea to pace yourself and set goals to where you wanna be in the edit for each time segment. Then you can reward yourself by taking a break. Now I know that this sounds counterintuitive since the goal is to edit faster, but this does help believe it or not. Tell me if this reminds you of something. You open up your editing software, excited to start on your next project, and an hour or so in, you start to slow down and you start to jump around the video and edit different parts of it just so you don't have to do the hard parts of the edit just yet. Then you hit a roadblock and you don't know what's missing from the video. So you start to think about what you can do when all of a sudden you get a random thought or a notification. And then before you realize it, you're distracted and you're watching a video on how to edit faster. Happens to me all the time, distractions, boredom, no creativity flowing, etc. So by setting these small and incremental goals to reach in each segment, what you're doing is tricking your brain, thinking you're doing small tasks at a moment each time, when in reality, you're working on a masterpiece. And by taking breaks, you're allowing yourself to relax and enjoy other things. And when you come back, not only you decrease the amount of distractions you experience, but now you will see your video with new eyes and a new perspective, and perhaps a better creative decision will emerge from your quick break. The fourth tip is to learn the keyboard shortcuts. Every editing software has them, and if you use them the right way, you will save so much time. This way, you can switch to any editing tool from the timeline, either if that's to split, cut, or whatever you need to do, instead of manually moving your mouse and selecting the tool every single time. You can find your editor's keyboard shortcuts by either going to the settings or by going to the website itself. And better yet, there's some editing software that lets you customize your shortcuts to ones that you're familiar with. That way, you can save the same shortcuts no matter what editor you use. All right, hang in there with me. The last one is the most important one. Now, this next tip is simply saving your presets. Please, I can't stress this enough. If you use a lot of effects, filters, or have certain settings that you like to use in multiple projects or clips, instead of remaking them every single time, you can save those settings into presets and reuse them whenever you want to, saving you so much time. It's really easy to do. Every editor has its own version of this, but you essentially set the settings for that particular effect and select on save or custom. And then you can name that preset and boom, you have it saved and ready for you to use. Now for the last tip, good job on hanging in there. It's simply what I like to call render templates. Now, I don't know if that's the right terminology, but I'm going with it because I want to. And this is basically when you have a custom sequence, effect, or animation that you worked so hard on making and plan on using it in the future. And instead of rendering it in that one video, you can take that sequence, for example, this title opener that I made and move it to its own project and render it from there. Now you have a final exported clip that you can import into multiple future projects and there's no need to make it again from scratch. You essentially have created your own custom template that you can customize however you want to depending on each video needs. And believe me, your system will thank you for it because as you saw, sometimes making these complicated sequences can result of you having multiple tracks open which can stress your system out, end up crashing, and not even being able to render it. Which did happen to me multiple times in the process of making custom effects. But what about templates other people made? Remember, there's no shame in using templates. That's what they're for. In fact, I can't remember how many templates I've used in my own videos. They help me save so much time. And that's where Motion Array can help you as well. Motion Array is literally the place to get quality templates, animation, stock videos, music, sound effects, pretty much everything. I talked about them before, so link in the description and you can try it out for free. So yeah, if you really wanna see a difference in your editing workflow and finish up much more faster, give these tips a try or don't, it's up to you. Now, if you ever wondered how often you should switch video editing software, I made a video on answering just that. So take a look. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.